uh, as a coach, probably it started because I was more traditional. I was like everybody else. You get the center, roll him out, post up, uh, get a four that, you know, can, I would like to spread the floor, but, you know, a couple posts, whatever. And we were losing my third year. I had a great point guard, Sasha Georgievich, uh, who played in the NBA a little bit, Boston Celtics, I think, drafted him. Or he had like a cup of coffee. He was a great player. And and he was one that he was the best point guard in Europe. And he was playing awful. And I had Antonio Davis of Indiana. And he was my center. And they were saying he's the worst American in Europe. And I knew Antonio was the best center in Europe. And Sasha was the best point guard. He's playing awful. It's got to be me. And it was. You know, I had him not playing the right way. So one day I just walked in the office. I said, we're doing this. We're doing that. Benching my top score, number one score on the team. Put him on the bench. I moved my small forward to power forward. Add another shooter. Open the floor up Sasha. Antonio was just pick and roll, go to the rim. We'll, we'll give you lobs. And, you know, we went from, uh, I think the next 24 games, we won 23 up. And they were the two best players in Europe. And wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You went, you went 23 and one right. after benching your leading score. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And because he, he wasn't guarding, wasn't efficient, we were posting up. Yeah. Sasha was like in a box. Antonio, who at that time was a big time runner, athlete. Yeah. Uh, pick and roll kind of guy and a great defensive player. And, and by changing that, it worked. Now, to be able to do that, one, they were going to fire me. I, well, I thought they were. <laughs> the national media was killing me. It's my third year, and we had success. But you know how basketball is. You know, they love you until they don't. They were killing me. And so and when I remember doing that, one of my assistant coaches was yelling at me, you're going to get us all fired. This is crazy. <laughs> this will never work. And, and so I did it. And so I learned from that. When I got to Phoenix, I did more or less the same thing. Everybody yelling at me and saying, you're crazy. You're going to get us killed. You're going to get fired. You're going to kill Sean's career, Mari's career. Uh, it's going to be awful. And we take off and when we were 62 and 10 that year, or 62 and 20. So it's... Um, uh, it, so, like I said, I rely on my Italian experience a lot. Well, Coach, I have a question. So, with the Phoenix, with the Phoenix start in particular, with how how fast you guys started and everything like that, you're obviously a humble guy. But like, at what point? <laughs> so at, at what point are you? At what point do you turn around to the people that have been yelling at you and sort of <laughs> doubting you and say like, "Well, maybe I know something about what I'm talking about." Well, I, you know, you don't need to because by that time you couldn't find anybody who was against it. <laughs> they were all for it. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly what I said. But uh, you know, I, I, you get lucky too, and this is why because the players kind of believed that I thought, but maybe not, and they're having a lot of voices in their hair in the air, but the, the, where I got lucky was we start off the year 32 and 10 and just killing people. Now, if you start off two and 10, then it would probably never work, although it's the same thing. And it could have been, you know, it took a while to get it going or whatever. Um, so you got to get lucky also. You can't, it's just not all, you know, it is it, luck plays a lot in the, all of this. I uh Nash obviously coming to Phoenix in 0405 was was huge as well. Gosh. Luck. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because Dal Dallas, Dallas, they, Dallas deciding not to resign him, right? They didn't want him. It's like yeah. really? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um and, and, and having played against that uh early very early in my career, played played playing against you guys, the the Nash Stoudemire pick and roll. Um probably doesn't get enough credit for being one of the hardest you know tandems to stop that action between those two guys Nash manipulating getting to the the angle he wanted to the pocket passes to Amari um why was that so challenging to defend well I think it was um um one they were really good I mean Steve is probably besides who, the present company with the best shooters ever uh, from three, from two, uh, one, off one foot. You know, he, he's unbelievable and how he can be manipulate, manipulate it. 
Uh, Mari called everything. He had hands. We used to, you know, vacuum cleaners, just whatever Steve threw, he caught. And his ability to be able to dunk was ridiculous. I mean, the strength and all that. And then he, you know, he developed further on, you know, the shot and whatever. But he, he had that. Steve had this. Now it's my job. Just, you know, spread the floor. Let him go. And then, you know, all defenses back then, and even now a little bit, they're all same. They all, you got to come in, touch the roller, go back out. Well, okay, how can we exploit that? And that's what we try to do everything offensively, how you can not guard us. And, you know, by playing fast, by getting that before they set up, uh, getting, you know, you walk back then, they went through two a days and, and you go through shoot arounds for two hours and all you do is talk. Well, you know, all that's good, but we were going to try to take that out. If we get down and score before you can do that, then all that talking you just did, it's not going to help any. Uh, so that was the first step. And the second step was, okay, if that guy's going to touch, let's put the shooter over there, have him out so far he can't get back. And then Steve, you know, Steve is great enough to where he can just get him. So actually it was, okay, defense wants to do this, the offense got to do that. If the defense adjusts, we adjust. And I I'm, I believe, you know, here's my – you said I, I'm not, uh, you know, egotistical. Well, my feeling back then, whatever you do, you can't guard us, period. Now, that we're going into that game. They can't guard us. So, you know, Yao Ming, who's a great player, you know, for Houston, can't play in our game. We can just say that. Hey – yeah, I mean, he can't play in our game. So it's up to us to run him so hard and get him all whacked up. Coach, you got to take him out. Or they can't beat us. If he's playing, can't beat us. And so that was our mindset. And, and it worked, you know, all the way until it didn't work. And <laughs> Tim Duncan saw that. He said, no, no. You know, we couldn't stop him. But, um, uh, you know, that's why basketball is fun. It's great matchups, people. But the players, you guys make it. You guys are so good. And so talented. It's even gotten better now. Players now are so talented. It's ridiculous. You can't guard them one-on-one. Yeah. The, the, and, and, and to that point, <clears throat> I've said this a number of times, but when I think about the evolution of the modern NBA to, to where we are now, to me it all started with those Phoenix Suns teams. I, I, I always mention the Orlando Magic teams we had were sort of an extension of that. Four out, one in. Jameer, Turk, and pick and rolls. Yeah. Dwight rolling down the rim. Four shooters, uh, and then of course the Steph and the Warriors sort of revolutionized. Right. And the Houston Rockets were a big part of where we are as well. The James Harden Houston Rockets. Um, do you do you do you sort of take credit for where <laughs> we are with basketball right now because of those Suns teams? Well. I mean, I think hey, we'll at least acknowledge my point. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You at no, least no, acknowledge no, yeah. that that's a valid we're, point. Yeah, yeah. We played differently than yeah. anybody back then. So, yeah, for that, yes. Um, but again, it only works that I think the Phoenix Suns should take credit. You know, it's like I'm, I'm part of it, yeah. proud to be part of it. But without Steve, it wouldn't have worked. Without Joe Johnson, it wouldn't have worked. Without Amari, it wouldn't have worked. Without Sean Mary, you know, I could go on and on and on. And, you know, we might touch on, but one of the things, this is before analytics. This is before they sanctioned it as okay to play that way. <laughs> before it was like taboo. And we're going against everything. We're going against uh, the sentiment on TV. Everything it was like, you know, let's go, guys. And my job was just to keep convincing them this works. And thank God we're winning, so it makes it easier. But, uh, um, you know, as we went forward, I kind of – and I've told this a lot of times, is that I told Steve Nash, we didn't go far enough. You know, we were right there. And you should have shot more threes. I should have made you shoot more threes. Didn't do it. We should have played faster. I didn't do it. Uh, we should have, instead of looking for a big guy because maybe we need that, we should have doubled down and gone one more shooter. You know, it's like right. you guys should have like, traded up in the 2006 draft for me. That's Shaq, basically which is great. Shaq was great. <laughs> But we we blinked, and yeah. we shouldn't have blinked, and we should have doubled down here. Let's go. Let's try to be the Warriors, you know, back then. So it's uh, we didn't quite get there. 